It's not a housing crisis. It's a greed crisis. According to many, we don't actually have a housing shortage because there are more vacant homes than homeless people. We already have the housing we need. We just need to put it to better use. This idea is appealing for a lot of people. Wouldn't it be great to solve housing without needing to do anything unpleasant, like building things or seeing neighborhoods change? But this is based on a deeply misleading statistical comparison. The numbers are real. There are in fact more technically vacant homes than homeless people. But it's based on two very false assumptions. 1. That all homes classified as vacant are somehow available to be repurposed. And 2. That homeless people are the entire extent of unmet housing need. The United States has 142 million homes. 10%, about 15 million, are classified as vacant by the Census Bureau. This 15 million is the number that people usually bring up when claiming that there are more vacant homes than homeless people, at least for the country as a whole. But these census vacancies are some of the most misunderstood and misused numbers in the housing debate. First, let's clear something up. This is not the same thing as the rental vacancy rate often included in news stories about the rental market. The rental vacancy rate is the percentage of apartments and other rental homes that are currently vacant and available to rent. Those 15 million census vacancies are a much bigger category. All homes that are vacant for any reason at all. The sheer size of this category makes it easy to assume that it's a jackpot of wasted housing sitting around. But the reality is more complicated and, frankly, more mundane. Rental vacancies are included in this figure, which are units that are vacant but on the market available to rent. It's a normal part of a functioning housing market that apartments sometimes have gaps between tenants, and that new buildings usually aren't fully occupied the day they're completed. More than that, everyone from tenants' rights groups to real estate investment magazines will tell you that rental vacancies are good for putting power in the hands of tenants and downward pressure on rents. When you add up all homes that are vacant, but on the market available to buy or rent, or where they've been sold or rented but the occupant hasn't moved in yet, you get 4.5 million homes, about one-third of all census vacancies in the U.S. By the way, some of these homes aren't even vacant. Units are labeled vacant if the current occupant plans to move within two months. Another third of census vacancies, 4.8 million, are seasonal, vacation, or occasional homes. These aren't even vacant in the sense of being empty or unused, but they're not used as anyone's primary home. These can, in theory, be bought or taken by the government to give people in need a place to live. But when you look into the details, it doesn't seem that practical. These homes can be anything from large summer estates on Long Island to timeshares in Fort Lauderdale or simple fishing cabins in northern Michigan. What do we do with these? Can we really solve the housing crisis in Boston or Seattle by shipping people off to fishing cabins in northern Michigan? Vacation homes might in fact be a big deal for policymakers in vacation or resort towns like Aspen or Martha's Vineyard, where a third or even half of all homes are vacation homes. But in most cities, only 1-2% to of homes are seasonal or vacation homes. Hardly a tsunami of extra supply, even if you wanted to buy them or somehow take them over. The last one-third or 5.4 million of America's vacant homes are other vacancies, a catch-all category of dozens of miscellaneous reasons for homes to be vacant. We have vacancies because of foreclosure, bankruptcy, or legal proceedings, including death. Vacancies brought on by the owner being in assisted living, in the military, on work assignment, or in jail. Vacancies because the home is being repaired, renovated, or prepared for sale. Vacancies being considered for demolition. We also have vacancies in specific use housing, military housing, student housing, even model homes. You can pick through this other category and find vacancies that you might want to discourage, like units being used to store furniture. But let's be real, this other vacancies category hardly feels like a gold mine of extra housing any more than the previous categories did. The second fundamental mistake behind the vacant homes versus homelessness comparison is treating homeless people as the whole extent of unmet housing need. Homelessness is the most visible and extreme housing failure, and we should care a lot about keeping people housed. But literal homelessness is only the tip of the iceberg. More than 600,000 people are estimated to be homeless on a given night in the U.S., likely an underestimate because it's difficult to count. But another 4 million Americans are doubled up, living with friends or family because of economic hardship or housing loss. This is hidden homelessness. It can be a precursor to literal homelessness, and it also leaves people in tenuous living situations characterized by conflict, 
stress, uncertainty, and lack of autonomy. A housing shortage can drive so many other problems for people and communities. Think of people living with roommates that they don't like because they can't find a place of their own. Think of people stuck living with abusive partners. Think of couples who do have a place together but don't have enough space or money for children. There's actually evidence of low fertility rates in California, Ontario, and British Columbia being linked to these places' dysfunctional housing markets. The Canadian cities experiencing the worst housing crunch are also seeing alarmingly high and increasing rates of young people living with their parents. Anyone who lives in a city with expensive housing can also tell you stories of people who grew up there being forced to move away due to housing. And let's not forget people who wanted to move to a city for work or school opportunities, but who couldn't make it work due to housing. None of these scenarios involve people being homeless, but in all cases there's not enough housing in their desired city or region to meet their needs. In other words, a housing shortage. The response you often hear to this is, so what? You're not guaranteed a home wherever you want. Just move. But we're not asking to be guaranteed a home. We're asking for our local governments to stop actively engineering housing shortages out of misguided ideas like, we already have enough housing. As an individual making choices about your life, sometimes it does make sense to leave an expensive city and move to a place you can afford. But people being priced out of the places they want to live especially places with economic and educational opportunities, should be considered a policy failure. We shouldn't want some cities to become enclaves that only certain types of people have access to. Cities should be places where people from different backgrounds and income levels can mix and mingle. In the end, the fact that there are more vacant homes than homeless people does not actually disprove the need to build more housing. The 15 million vacant homes in the U.S. Census are an enormous category that includes homes vacant for dozens of often mundane reasons, like apartments simply being between tenants. And the 600,000 homeless people that get counted on any given night are only the tip of the iceberg of unmet housing need across the U.S. Millions more people are unable to move out of their parents' place, doubled up and living with friends or other relatives, living in overcrowded conditions, unable to get more space to have the children they want. Or they did find adequate housing, but only by moving away from the place they actually want to live. We're definitely not saying it's wrong to look at vacant homes as a way to add more housing supply. Some vacancies do legitimately feel like wasted housing, like when homes are used for furniture storage, and vacation homes might be a big deal in some places. But the idea that America has a jackpot of 15 million wasted homes lying around, waiting for us to take and solve the housing crisis, is pure fantasy. Oh, and one last thing. If you're going to implement a vacant homes tax, consider avoiding the approach of San Francisco, whose recently approved tax leaves an exemption for single-family homes that are held vacant. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And a special thanks to our supporters on Patreon.